So I've got the Rev A and Rev B versions of the Ice Espresso here, and I wanted to see what the difference is in their um, emissions, whether I could tell if I'd made any improvements on the B version versus the A1. So on the A1 here, um, I've got a crystal that's kind of like stuck out at the end, there's no ground plane surrounding it, and um, the crystal uh, positive and or feedback and um, input lines are actually run on traces on the bottom of the board, um, which is not exactly at all what you're supposed to be doing. Um, and they work, but uh, the suspicion is that they're going to make it um, not very good performing in terms of uh, uh, radiation. And so for the Rev B1, I have corrected that, and I've got all the crystal signals are on the top level, and they're referenced to a solid ground plane on below them. Um, there's no traces below that or on the bottom level, and there is also a solid ground plane around the crystal um, with some stitching vias around it. And uh, the rest of the board on the Rev B1 actually has solid ground plane under the top level and a solid ground plane on the bottom. So you see that there's ground on the bottom here. And so I'm hoping that this is just going to improve the uh, performance somewhat. Um, and so to test that, what I'm going to do is I've got a uh, RF Explorer here and a near field uh, magnetic probe. And this kind of test is something you can do that's supposed to be simple but it isn't like a comprehensive way to show that your device is going to pass all certifications or something. It's just to show that um, you can measure something and you can kind of look at differences between two parts. So first let's look at the... Um, oh, and on both of these I've loaded the same program, and the program is driving a uh, LED matrix at 24 megahertz, so it's putting out a reasonable amount of digital output here, and clearly there's nothing connected to it so that it's just radiating out, I guess. Um, the first thing we're going to look at is the Rev A board, and to test it, I'm going to hold the board next to this uh, near field probe um, to try to capture signals going out the side of the board. Um, and then we look at it, um, we're looking at a span of 20 to 100 megahertz. Um, so you can see that while it's over here, um, it's near the FPGA, and the strongest signal it sees is 48 megahertz. Um, and that's likely because the FPGA's PLL um, is running at 48 megahertz. Uh, and then as I move it down, um, we start to see two sets of things here. Um, and the reason for this is that the ESP is running at 40 megahertz. Um, and so as I get closer to this crystal here, this 40 megahertz signal is going to become dominant. And it's going to end up getting pretty high, right? So I'm holding the probe next to this. Um, and I'm reading at um, a minimum of like a 73, minus 73 dB, um, which is pretty, pretty tall. And then you see that there's a bunch of um, repeated spikes here. And again, this is kind of a hand-wavy test. It's really just kind of to see what's happening on the board. Um, and so then I'm also going to uh, move this probe across the top of the board. All right, and so this is kind of the peaks I'm seeing with the Rev-A board. We got a maximum of minus 67 um, dB at uh, 40, basically 40 megahertz. So now I'm going to plug in the Rev-B board. And then let's see, how does it do? Does it do any better? And again, they're both running the same code. Um, the only changes to the code was to change the... Um, pins between the uh, ESP and the FPGA to match the board changes. Alright, so this board has the improved routing, and um, it looks like the there's still spikes there, right, but they're much less pronounced. Um, and the major difference here is now all the signals are re um, really just referenced against really strong ground planes. Um, and then yeah, you can see that there is a spike here at uh, 40 megahertz, right? But it's only at uh, minus 84 dB. Um, so that's pretty good. And then as I move it around like this, you know, you can see that there's still spikes there, but it's not nearly as spiky as the as the first portion. And then I'll hold it this way as well to see if we try to capture any fields coming out the top here. Yep. So I get a nice, uh, nice batch of something there. Um, and at 73, but um, it's also not clear how uh, real these signals are, I guess. Um, okay, so we've got what this one here looks like. At. Let's look at the uh, Rev A1 again and see, just to do a second comparison. So it was at minus 73. And then, I don't know, it's booked in. Okay. Still a lot hotter. And then if I hold this one over here, 
Let's see about the hands I'm getting. Anyway, so that's kind of a uh, little test just to show that, in fact, it really does matter how you lay out your board, and you can get fairly significant decreases in um, emissions just by doing things a little better. Um, and then this again is with not really any simulation, it's just kind of using a best practice for um, circuit layout. So that's that.